Batman, the Long Halloween special issue one. Jeff Lowe Brighton with Tim Sale on the art. This is your, your team back from Long Halloween and Dark Victory. And it is a follow up to Dark Victory. This is referencing things. This is set relatively soon after. I mean, you know, it's maybe a bit of time has passed, but it's not. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, Robin's still new. Um, we get Barbara Gordon interest in this. Although they're interestingly going the. Uh, the uh, the niece route rather than the the daughter route. Weird, but okay. Yeah, that's well. If I remember correctly, uh, the three specials they did before they did Long Halloween. Uh, you know, they did like a. I think the trade's called Haunting Night, but it's like the three okay. like fifty page specials like this one is that they did mm-hmm. before. Um, I believe one of those stories was about Barbara having to be adopted by Jim. Okay. Because of uh. <sighs> Like that might have been original continuity because yeah. I remember there was James Jr. Um, and then I remember that because isn't Gordon's wife named Barbara? Yes, as well. Yeah, so I think that was a little. Um, but okay, I mean, she saw Barbara Gordon, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal really in the grand scheme it's, of it's things. It's not Alfred's niece, a la you know Batman and Robin. Oh yeah, so that so, stupid thing. Yeah, no, so much she's yeah. all Babs. Uh. And they yeah. kind of introduce her in a Batgirl kind of way in this, which is a little bit weird, in that she just w- dresses up as Batgirl for Halloween and wants to go trick-or-treating with Robin. <laughs> so, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get, like Yeah, because yeah, Batman, or Gordon asks Batman at the signal, hey, my uh, my niece wants to, wants to ask you if your new kid, Robin, will go trick-or-treating with her. And much to his surprise, he actually shows up with Robin later in the issue uh, so they can go trick-or-treating. So we're dealing with a fairly young uh, Dick and Babs in this. Um, but now right away, it's like it, there's you know, it's newspaper clippings of Harvey Dent, it's that Tim Sale art, so you feel like you're right back in the, the long Halloween universe. Uh, and the general premise of this story is that Calendar Man is pissed about the holiday killer. He's pissed that his gimmick was taken. Okay. So he comes after Gilda and Harvey Dent because of this. He's livid. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's a 50-page, but I won't go through it scene by scene necessarily, but the... I mean, I mean I'll say this. It feels good to be back in this world. Uh, generally speaking, I enjoyed the premise. Uh, I did think the odd little bit of characterization here or there uh, was a little bit much... Or, I'd say it was also a couple of moments where it kind of felt like when it was referencing things from Dark Victory and Long Halloween, it felt a little bit, I don't want to say fan servicey, but I, I just a little bit like, oh, you're maybe over-referencing things a little bit just to, and part of it may just be the way to remind people of things because they're they're actually continuing that continuity, uh, right. which I, I wasn't so sure like how tied it was going to be. I mean, I, obviously it was going to be Tim Sale Art. I figured it would probably be in continuity, but I didn't think it was going to be, no, this is a continuation in what happened to Harvey and Gilda after. And and I do actually really like the premise. The calendar man be, being pissed that his gimmick was taken. It's great. It's good. He, he goes on a rant. He's like, the Riddler's got those stupid riddles. You know, Joker's, well, he's just Joker. And like, right. you know, everyone's got their gimmick. But somehow my gimmick was taken from me, and he's pissed that the spotlight was taken, and now that there's like almost someone in this universe who is associated more with holiday crime <laughs> than he is, and he's not happy about it. Uh, so he's still in all these gems uh, that are related to months of the year, and Batman's trying to track him down, but he kidnaps Gilda at one point. Harvey makes a deal with, uh, with Batman about going after them. Um... Robin gets involved when he sees the bat signal go up and sort of ditches Babs, but not in a bad way, like, she doesn't seem to mind. Uh, we see Gilda and Harvey reunited. Solomon Grundy's in there. He's been kind of working with Harvey. He's, he's like a sort of bodyguard. Uh, nice little touch that I liked is that James Gordon Jr. on Halloween, uh, who's like a toddler, or maybe like five at most, um, mm-hmm. he's dressed as a little devil, which I thought was quite funny, given that yeah. You know, and and main continuity, he grows up to be a villain and a serial killer. So, you know, I thought that was a, 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 a nice touch. Uh, I like that Harvey at one point like smashes or covers up half of the bat signal so that when he turns it on, it's just half of the bat signal. So it's like a two face version. Two-faced. Yeah, so it's a nice little touch. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and we have them meeting on the roof again. We have 
more of the Gordon Batman like dynamic between them. Uh, and it, honestly, it read very well. It's like 50 pages. It went in fairly quick. It did not feel like a slog at all. Uh, so, you know, credit where credit is due. I, you know, I, I think Loeb and sales, or not say, I shouldn't say sale, but Loeb's rating has definitely not always been great. And it, it right. you know, stuff that he did in the 2000s onwards is a bit more sketchy and hit and miss. Uh, but mostly this felt like it was back in the the mold. I, I don't think it's as good mm-hmm. as like Long Halloween or Dark Victory. Uh, it's but it does feel like it is part of that world again. And for better or worse, I think if you're wanting to be back in that world, there's uh, things to like. Um, but you know what? It has that art style. It has those types of layouts, uh, the flat colors, all that stuff. Batman with his long ears. Uh, he pulls a Mission Impossible at one point where him and Harvey have swapped places and he pulls off a mask and it looks like the cowl's on under the mask and I'm like, how did the, like, did, did the ears like fold down and then sort of stick up as soon as you took the mask off? That's like, so stupid, but I love it. Like, you know? what, what was the the process of this? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so so I just, so the, the big action is that Batman and Harvey have to like take on Calendar Man and save Gilda. Uh, and Batman does beat the shit out of Calendar Man. He's got blood all over his fists. Um, and Robin's kind of questioning that a little bit. Um, right. So, yeah. But, uh, in the end, Gilda and Harvey, like, you know, they've got a little boat and they, they sail away out of the sea. Um, and it's like, well, th- this is not over. So this is the big thing, is there was news last week that implying that the, Loeb and Sale wanted to do more Batman after this. And reading this story, it's very clear that that's the intention. Uh, because mm-hmm. when it gets to the end, they're talking about how, you know, is, is it possible that Harvey could come back to us, that like he could become Harvey Dent again? And Batman says that, I mean, I think we were a bit naive there. I, I think Two-Face was always part of Harvey, just under the surface, mm-hmm. re- you know, waiting to come out. Uh, but it kind of ends on this, like, well... Harvey and Gilda have got something going on, uh, and the Calendar Man uh, knew about whatever it was, and now Batman suspects something, and it just ends with him jumping off the rooftop from Gordon and says the end for now. So, clearly, they're yeah. planning on more now. Well, all that means they're just going to do like some specials every Halloween for a couple of years, uh, and do the story that way, or if it means an actual miniseries at some point, like The Long mm-hmm. Halloween, I don't know. Uh, I think I would lean towards maybe just a couple of more specials, like one next Halloween, one the Halloween after. Make it maybe a bit of a trilogy yeah. of fifty-page specials rather than. It's, but, uh, it's uh, a shame that we already know the um, the solicitations that we're not getting one around Christmas because yeah. quarterly would be pretty cool. Oh, that would be neat. You know? uh, I I think I'm just being cynical there. I don't really believe these two committing to a monthly book at any point, even if it is just no. twelve issues. Yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe every other month, maybe they'll do a thing like, oh, I'll be bi-monthly, and you'll get one every other month for mm-hmm. two years or something. Maybe they'll do something like that. But if I was to guess, I would expect another couple of Halloween specials over the next couple of years, and uh, you know, just hope we remember anything <laughs> what that happened in the previous year's book, because that's a long time away between issues. Uh, that I, I felt like, as much as they were shooting maybe a bit too much for nostalgia at a couple of points... It, there was a comfort blanket feeling to reading this. And it's, you know, T- Tim Sale's art's not always perfect, right? It's a very distinct style, and there's definitely the odd face or whatever where it's like, okay, that, that's, this is not necessarily where the strong parts of this art lie, but whenever you see... Well, there's, a, there's a panel towards the end where Gordon's coming to see Batman at the crime scene and he's does like sort of red light hit in his face from like the the police mm. siren or the ambulance uh, siren and the way it's just these flat colors with the black but the red sort of creates the shape of the mustache and the way it kind of hits his hat it just you know it looks really good it, it definitely has that cartoony noir look that i would describe it's, long it's halloween very and dark stylized. Victory. yeah uh yeah i mean like his joker ginormous teeth and jaw right like like when you look at the cover of the Long Halloween, you know, but it, it's not bad. It's Tim Sale, like there's there's a reason for it. So, you know, yeah, uh, I had a good time. I had a good time. I I would say that uh, it was a nice trip down memory lane, and I'm down for more. Once in a while, like I I think you know getting another one of these next year would be cool. 
Uh, and it's a far more exciting way to celebrate Halloween with a DC comic than, say, a 100-page anthology book with a bunch of 10-page stories. Yeah, which most of which are kind of not as good, you know? This yeah. has seems at least has quality there. With Yeah, it was a bit of a comfort blanket, especially, I think a lot of people read Long Halloween as one of their earlier uh, Batman books in terms of like when they're mm-hmm. just starting out in comics. So I think for a lot of people, there will be a, a comfort blanket feeling to this. And uh, but in Dark Victory, I mean, I always recommend Dark Victory. I feel like Dark Victory gets overshadowed and no one like bothers to recommend it. And it should be recommended because it is really good. Yeah, I I have it. I just, I've never read it. I should, when I get some time, I should definitely go for it. But it's a, it is a big, thick trade, like, you know. It's just an easy trade, though. It's, it's 13 issues. It's, it's an easy one. Uh, as far as rating this goes, I, I, I would... Uh, it's tough. Because I, part, part of me doesn't know if I'm doing this out of, like... Not nostalgia, but out of just, like, the, the, the happy feeling that this generally has with it uh, over the but the concepts are good. The art is good. You know, the odd little complaints, not a huge... I, I think I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to be reserved on this one and not give it too high a rating. Uh, I'll just say I had a really good time with it. And I, I think people who want more of that universe are probably going to enjoy the the 50 pages with it. But uh, at the same time, though, it's not reinventing the wheel. It is very, like... You know, like by relying so much on the continuity of Long Halloween and Dark Victory, it's also not doing anything spectacularly new either. If it, if anything, the concept of Calendar Man being pissed that his gimmick was stolen is... It's almost like in the last 20 years, like, some people have said that jokingly, like, hey, isn't Calendar Man kind of pissed that, you know, isn't this Calendar Man's yeah. thing? And it's almost like they put that in as a as an, an answer to that. So... Well, yeah, because people also suspected Calendar Man early. I remember that being part of the thing. Right, because it wasn't Long Halloween. It's kind of a mystery who the holiday killer actually was. Like they really hint that it's it's Gilda, but there are people out there that thought it was might, might be Calendar Man orchestrating things. Hmm. I think I remember that. So so the fact that Loeb brings it back around, that is a, a fun little piece. Yeah, it's not bad though. Uh, I I think it's a it's a nice treat as a as a one off thing and. Uh, we can get the occasional one one off thing after is a nice idea too so yeah